Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. It has nothing to do with IQ. It's about the passion you have within yourself to become great. A workplace internship program at Sacred Hearts Academy teaches girls how to have grit. Women filmmakers come together in downtown Honolulu to inspire and be inspired. A young engineer invents a way for her handicapped dog to walk. Learn all about the mules at Haleakala National Park. Meet a young woman who embraces the male-dominated art of fire knife dancing. Learn how to make a heart-healthy yogurt parfait. And find out why girl DJs have so much fun. All on this episode of Hiki No, coming to you from President William McKinley High School, home of the Tigers. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki No. Can do! We're here at President William McKinley High School in the center of Honolulu, Oahu, in front of the administration building, which itself has its own historical marks. On the exterior of the building remains bullet holes, most likely from Japanese fighter planes during the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. The Japanese pilots assumed they were targeting the state capitol because of the flagpole, the front lawn, and the appearance of the administrative building. The bullet holes are part of the school's history while also serving as a reminder that the school, even in wartime, endures. Our first story takes us just a few miles from here to Sacred Hearts Academy in Kaimuki, where students show us why, when it comes to planning a career, grit is good. Okay, go to the top row, all the way to the right, okay, now come down a little bit and go to the left. When Shelby Matos isn't busy studying, the Sacred Hearts Academy Junior is working hard at the TV news station, Hawaii News Now. Push those until you see breaking news pop up. She's part of a mentorship program called Girls Got Grit, which empowers students at the academy to get a head start on becoming leaders in their communities. Being in Girls Got Grit allows students to enter a professional business environment and doing that kind of sets a level of expectations for when we enter the workforce and it also kind of builds us as businesswomen and so I feel confident to sell myself and sell something in the future and so I feel like that will help me in the long run. Students get a taste of what it's like to pursue a career before they enter the workforce. Others have interned at Castle Medical Center and Alexander and Baldwin. They are partnered with mentors, prominent women in the community. They learn about work ethics, about how to write a business proposal, grouping these girls with various companies in the community, and for them to intern at uh, their place of work to see all the different facets and opportunities that that company provides. <laughs> As Vice President of Saks Fifth Avenue in Hawaii and mother of two Sacred Hearts Academy students, Mrs. Shelley Kramer says success all comes down to grit. It has nothing to do with IQ. It's about the passion you have within yourself to become great. And so I thought that that would be an amazing word to use, hence Girls Got Grit. You guys can have a food contest. I want these girls to come out strong empowered and feel that they have a network that they can touch. Um, so after they graduate, if there's an opportunity to come home, they know who to connect with and how to come back into the community. Shelby is already putting these lessons to good use, applying the skills she learned at her internship to her activities at school. My favorite part had to be working with news because I'm the news editor for our school's newspaper. So that's kind of where I lie and where my heart is. Just talking with them and writing articles and just doing things that I loved kind of added the heart to it. Shelby's among the first group of girls to kickstart the program. She admits she was scared at first because she did not know what to expect. I applied to Girls Got Grit because I wanted to do something fun and new. And I feel like Girls Got Grit was something no one's ever heard of. And it was terrifying to sign up for it because the initial group had no idea what we were doing. So it was kind of fun to be the first group to do that. Shelby says the program turned out to be one of the most valuable decisions of her high school career. 
I could see myself working at Hawaii News now because they do so many things and they get to like work with all the different departments and especially because the community here is so loving and caring and so it was so nice to see that and I think I would love to enter with that. Shelby learned the true meaning of grit and passion and is now inspired to help other girls discover their grit. I'm going to pass down what I learned from GGG to the next group and hopefully they'll be able to find as much passion as I have in the program and it's just such an amazing experience to be able to talk to these professionals and see what they think and what happens in their lives. This is Michaela Lancaster Hoover from Sacred Hearts Academy for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at hikinokandu. Our next story comes from Mililani Middle School, where students highlight Hawaii's thriving women filmmaker movement. Mark's Garage in downtown Honolulu is the home of Hawaii women in filmmaking. Founded in February of 2011, this devoted group of women has created a safe and creative space dedicated to building a community of women and girls who connect, create, mentor, and inspire other women and girls to explore the world of film. Their mission is to encourage women and girls work behind the camera and to empower them in making media that matters. What I enjoy the most about it is really to bring people together through film and have the possibility to really create the conditions for women and girls to, to engage with such a powerful and strong medium which is film. In line with our missions um, to put more women and girls behind the camera, uh, last year we launched a pilot project, the Summer Real Camp for Girls, which is one week intensive <laughs> workshops with girls uh, where girls learn the art and craft of filmmaking in a very condensed and intense way, but really managing to be exposed to all the ins and outs of, of filmmaking. Even though it was really intense, um, it was very energizing because it was just like the excitement um, all the girls felt and that they really wanted to learn ways and how to use a camera, how to tell a story very well. I think that was one of the things that kind of made me like, felt like, oh man, I can do this forever. They were a push out of their boundaries constantly and with the same strength each and every time they will pull it together and make it happen, no matter what. It was different from being inside a classroom because our lessons weren't actually that very long. It was like a few hours and then right after that we had to plan and go out there and film. So it was like action and that's it and you just go with the flow. It was great working with so many different creative minds. I mean to relate to other girls who want um, the same as me in this sort of profession. And to work with them was amazing because you get, you get to really see the true nature of filmmaking and how much work and effort goes into it. It's a lot and it's kind of hard, but it's really rewarding and everything was just amazing about the whole thing. As far as an organization is concerned, I want them to know that they have a space they can always go back to that they can always bring their ideas and we will work our best to make that idea happen with them. I also want them to, to, to think and believe that they are amazing creative beings, that it's just a matter of having the tool and they can just do it. It's a skill, but ultimately it's really to unleash girls' creativity. This is Caitlin Alvior from Milani Middle and Hikino. We're back at President William McKinley High School in Honolulu on the island of Oahu. We are currently inside the McKinley Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps Tiger Battalion. The McKinley Jarrow TC unit, established in 1921, is the oldest Hawaii public school unit. And since the beginning, McKinley's Jarrow TC has produced great leaders for Hawaii, such as newly inducted Royal Hawaiian Guard member, Mr. Paul Naki. We take you now to the island of Kauai, where students at Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School tell the story of how a girl engineer poured her knowledge into helping her best friend walk. Haley and her dog Harley have been best friends since Haley was a toddler. Her father wanted her to grow up with not just a pet, but a true companion. I, feel good. I would explain our relationship as 
special. He's like around the same age and I'm the one who takes care of him. And he's really happy-go-lucky and he, he gets me. Oh boy. We took her to the, the Humane Society and um, it's one that she really gravitated towards and we felt was a good friendly dog for her. Not long after they got him, Haley and her family found out that Harley was diagnosed with canine degenerative myelopathy disease. Degenerative myelopathy is a disease of the spinal cord of dogs. It's thought to be an inherited problem that occurs in certain breeds of dogs. Well, when I found out, I was really little, so I didn't really know what it did and how it affected him. But when I got older, I got to researching and I felt bad that it means that he's not going to be able to walk around as much. Seeing Harley struggle, Haley decided to do something to help her friend. There you go. There you go. First, I had to research about the disease and how I could help. I got the idea to look for an app that shows me like how much of what I would need and a way I can look at it from a whole bunch of different angles. So I found this app called 123D Design, and it's like, it's for building and engineering. Haley went through trial and error to build this wheelchair, but the finished product worked and affected Harley in many ways. I built the wheelchair for Harley because I found out that it's a way to better the life of a dog who has this kind of disease. After I built the wheelchair, I saw he got a lot happier and I think he knows that it's helping him. And so it just makes me feel happy that like he's able to run and walk. You wanna get up, you wanna get up? What happened with the wheelchair is it, it helped them spend more time together. I think that was what really made her want to do it for the dog because she would notice that he would get so tired that he would be stuck away and wouldn't be able to even get back to somewhere that he wanted to go. When I saw how excited he was and how happy he looked while he was walking and running around, I just felt this overwhelming feeling of happiness. <laughs> Harley is a big part of the Golkan family and means a lot to Haley as a best friend. Their relationship proves dogs truly are a man's best friend. This is Casey Nakashima from Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School for Hikino. We're back in the heart of Honolulu, Oahu, on the front steps of President William McKinley High School, where heroes once stood. A plaque was presented on May 15, 1965, to honor those McKinley students who served and died in military action. Today, the plaque is displayed upon the wall of the historic building known as A Building. These heroes who died serving our country represent high honor, courage, and integrity for McKinley High School as they inspire younger generations to strive for greatness in themselves. Our next story takes us to the island of Maui, where students at Seabury Hall Middle School explore the integral role of mules at Haleakala National Park. Haleakala National Park on Maui has been using mules since the 1930s. The crater was designated as a national park in 1916 and it is protected by the Federal Wilderness Act, which states, an area where the earth and its community of life are untrammeled by man. There shall be no temporary road, no use of motor vehicles, no landing of aircraft. Well, we use mules here in Haleakala because Haleakala is a designated wilderness. So um, there, it, there, in general, there's a restriction. There's no motorized vehicles, motorized equipment period allowed. During the 1930s, the trail system and the wilderness cabins were constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps. The mules carried all of the lumber and all of the food and supplies for the crews that built the cabins and the trails. Almost a century later, Michael McKinnon, the current animal caretaker, is preparing to lead his mules into the crater on a 28-mile round-trip journey. What do you say, Lefty? He and his co-workers are packing supplies to maintain the cabin and assist in conservation projects. Like I can pack lumber, I can pack plants. Anything you can throw at me up to a certain point, I can, I can get in there on the back the backs of the mules somehow. If you want me to take something into the backcountry for you, I'm going to do it. 
I can cruise in there faster than you can hike. My, my riding mule, Jake, will move out about four miles an hour. Hup mule, hup. Good boy, Jake. Get up, mules. Get up, Toby, get up, Jake. Haleakala is known as one of the quietest places on Earth. To minimize noise pollution, which disturbs both people and native species, the park strives to use mechanized vehicles as little as possible. Upon arriving at each cabin, there is work to be done. Unloading supplies such as gas tanks and wood, and assisting other park workers in the rat eradication program. The eggs of nanny birds, an endangered species, are threatened by rats. In addition to traps, the mules have carried in native plants such as ule, aali'i, and ahinahina for transplanting. It is late in the day when they reach their last stop at Paliku. The dependable mules have once again brought the supplies safely and quietly into the crater. The following day, they make the long journey back across the crater, then up Holly Mountain Trail, then back to base camp. This is Ennis Asher from Seabury Hall Middle School for Hiki no. Next, from the big island of Hawaii, students at Hilo Intermediate School show us how to make a refreshing and healthy snack. This class is so hard. I know, I'm starved. I didn't even get to eat lunch today. When kids get home from school, the first thing they do is eat snacks like chips, cookies, and soda. These snacks have lots of calories that are not good for you. Maybe that's why nearly 12% of kids in Hawaii are obese and their rates are growing every year. It's easy to choose a healthier alternative like a yogurt parfait. Let's make one now. Get a cup or a bowl, a spoon, yogurt, granola, and your fruit of choice. The fruits we'll be using in our parfait are mixed berries and bananas. First, add a small amount of granola to the bottom of your bowl or cup. Then, add yogurt on top. Next, Put a thin layer of granola along with your fruits on top of the yogurt. Yum! Now that you know how easy it is to create this healthy after-school snack, you can share it with family and friends. This is Keo Kina Freitas from Hilo Intermediate School for Hikino. Our next story takes us to Kapa'a Middle School on the island of Kauai where a young girl bonds with her brothers as they teach her the ins and outs of a traditionally male-dominated art form. Kaylin Drake, the only female fire knife dancer on Kauai, shares her family's tradition while enduring the heat of her scalding baton. I enjoy doing fire knife dancing because I get to practice my Samoan culture. My brothers and my family from Oahu got me into fire knife dancing. Nowadays, fire knife dancing is used for entertainment purposes. Back then, it was made out of two weapons. So it was a warrior dance back in the olden days. But now it's just for entertainment, showing the warriors that what they can do with skills with the fire. My first time doing fire knife dancing without fire was when I was five years old. And I started with fire two years ago. With the privilege of having two older brothers, Kaylin is constantly watched and critiqued and strives to improve her technique. Going against tradition, this princess proves that girls can also take the heat. When she first started to do fire and earth dancing, I wasn't too thrilled about it because we were sticking with tradition. And traditionally, princesses didn't do the fire dance. When my sister is doing the fire knife dancing, uh, what amazes me is just that how she can keep her composure while dealing with the fire and spinning. Also, just not being so nervous to perform in front of everybody. Watching her over this year, getting more involved with the community of fire knife dancing, I get excited to see pictures and photos, especially if I'm not there. Though fire knife dancing may appear really fun, 
it can also be very dangerous. Before, when I first started with fire, I kept getting burned and getting hurt, and I wasn't really used to it. But now, I don't really get burned a lot, and I'm starting to learn more tricks and stunts and cool stuff that people would get more interested in. Kaylin's older brothers have been fire knife dancing since their elementary school years. They have passed on their skills to Kaylin just as they were taught by their elders. When my sister becomes my age, I think she will become as good, maybe even better than me if she keeps practicing. I do think of passing it down to the next generation to keep the culture going and the tradition. This is Haley Gokan from Kapa'a Middle School for Hikino. We're back at President William McKinley High School, part of the black and gold in the city of Honolulu, Hawaii. Through a bond drive for the military, students raised over $300,000 to purchase a B-24 Liberator bomber for World War II. Today, this amount would be equivalent to more than $4 million. The spirit of pride and tradition still lives on today in the hearts of students who have come together to raise money to help out a fellow tiger fighting a battle with cancer. Our final story takes us to the windward side of Oahu, where students at King Intermediate School spin a story about a girl who found her calling, at least for now. When I grow up, I want to be a DJ. Five, four, three, two, one. That will conclude this evening's entertainment. When you're in middle school, going to a school dance is a real treat. It's an even bigger treat if your classmate is the one mixing the beat. I'm Aisha Momoto and I'm a 7th grader at King Intermediate School and I'm a school DJ. I wasn't actually planning to start DJing, but I took a summer school course and I um, took this media class and we did a lot of photography and video editing, but at the end we did DJing and it was really fun and exciting. Exciting. and all I could think about was how I wanted just to continue to explore DJing. I was shocked. I didn't realize that uh, middle school had dances. Knowing that was already interesting and then knowing that she wanted to be a DJ, first of, of course I said, well, how did, how did that happen? And so she shared with me that uh, she had learned all of these DJ DJing techniques and, um, and strategies from, um, from a class from the summertime. And so it was an exciting opportunity for us. I was happy for her. It's an exciting opportunity that requires a lot of hard work. While most students spend their lunch in the cafeteria, Aisha and other King DJs are in the school studio, picking the perfect songs and assembling playlists to keep the crowd energized and on the dance floor. What I enjoy most about DJing school dances are being able to see how the crowd responds and reacts to my DJing. And since DJing opens a whole other world of music, it's really cool to see how other people respond to it. All the professional DJ equipment that the students used was provided by a teacher in school, and that opened up a unique opportunity for the students. I get to learn how to use new technology and software and I get to connect with the crowd in a way that most people don't get to experience. And their hard work pays off. They play at the school dances including a special 8th grade banquet and sometimes even dances for other schools. Thanks to summer school, Aisha discovered one of her greatest passions and a lesson she'll remember for the rest of her life. Girls make great DJs, and I love DJing. This is Bailey Nakano from King Intermediate for Hikino. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hikino. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Tune in next week for more proof that Hawaii's young people, Hikino, can do.
broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.